Hey everybody, how's it going? I am your host Adrian, coming to you almost live from lovely Petaluma, California, here in Studio MC3 at Quicksurf Internet Studios. The Geekinator is a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. Do feel free to head on over to techpodcast.com and check out all the other technology-related shows over there as well. I'd like to encourage everybody to visit us online over at quicksurf.com. Please do subscribe to the show if you have not already done so. For those of you who have, thank you so much for subscribing. And with that, let's go ahead and get into the stories for this episode. Uh, starting off over at eweek.com, uh, Google Glass has, or Google has released a software update for Google Glass, and it nets a longer battery life, and there's some new features. Uh, so there's a new software update this week coming out uh, that brings Android KitKat, improved battery life, and a myriad of other improvements and new features to Glass devices. They were unveiled April 14th in a post on the Glass Google Plus page. You've been asking us uh, when the next round of updates were coming, the post dates. Well, they're coming later this week, and we know it's been a little while, but this is a big one, and we think it's well worth the wait. So KitKat uh, being included is pretty cool. Um, you know, go check out the post for uh, more information. As always, everything we've talked about is linked up in the show notes, so uh, do check those out as well. From uh, Mashable.com, Google previews new designs for its modular smartphones. Uh, Google... Uh, here they've got, um, uh, as part of its plans for Project Era, the company's highly anticipated Android-powered modular smartphone. Um, they've unveiled a, a slew of new designs for this phone. They look pretty nice. Um, the conference that they were unveiled at aims to give developers a better understanding of how they can take advantage of the platform and elaborates on the guidelines revealed to them last week when Google released its module developers kit. So uh, modular cell phones seem like that's kind of where things are going, but uh, really only time will tell. So I'm curious to see, you know, what, what, uh, you know, having a modular phone, what, how you can configure it and, and you know, what you can include and not include. So it should be pretty cool. From myfox8.com, Android users are at risk of the heart bleed bug. Heart bleed, heart bleed bug. Boy, that's really hard to say. I have the worst time saying that. Apparently, we are not over with this uh, OpenSSL vulnerability that we've been covering for the last uh, couple of episodes. Even if you've changed all your passwords over the heart bleed virus, you may still be at risk if you use an Android device, according to the Huffington Post. Mark Rogers, a security expert at the mobile security firm, Lookout told the Huffington Post that numerous devices using older versions of Google's Android operating system may be at risk of the high-profile bug. So if you're using Android version 4.1.1, you should avoid sensitive transactions on your mobile devices due to this bug. The whole device is vulnerable, and you should be cautious about the kind of sites you use. I'd be cautious about doing banking on your phone. So this is definitely not a good thing at all. Uh, makes it uh, kind of scary, actually. From the register.co.uk, Google has gobbled up a Facebook woed, wooed Titan Aerospace. Web giant Google is buying Titan Aerospace, presumably, presumably to help it blanket the world in internet con connectivity beamed from drones and balloons. The acquisition was reported by the Washington Street Journal and we'll see the Titan Aerospace team work with Google's Project Loon group, uh, which makes high altitude balloons for dispensing cheap internet to rural areas. We actually talked about this uh, quite some time back uh, here on the show. Um, it looks like uh, Google is really starting to uh, ante up what they're trying to do. From the spacereporter.com, has NASA discovered a new Saturn moon? I don't know, have they? Images taken by NASA's Cassini spacecraft a year ago show a bright extended feature on the outer edge of Saturn's A ring that could be a newly forming small moon. The discovery is reported in the journal Icarus by a team of researchers led by Dr. Carl Murray of Queen Mary University of London. 
The two Cassini images taken 33 seconds apart show an arc-shaped object that is significantly brighter than the ring materials around it. The object is estimated to be six miles wide and 750 miles long. So definitely it is uh, not a small object for sure. So it could be a moon that's forming. It could just be a large asteroid or maybe a clump of rock that's kind of bonded together. I mean, that's kind of how stuff like this starts. So it'll be interesting to see over time uh, what happens with that. From techtimes.com, SpaceX to launch... SpaceX's launch to space station has been delayed. When will it fly again? Who knows? Uh, they plan to launch a Dragon space capsule to the International Space Station at uh, 4.58 p.m. Eastern Daylight Savings Time on April 14th. However, that mission was delayed after engineers discovered a helium leak in the first stage of the Falcon 9 booster rocket. That would have been catastrophic if they had allowed that launch to go. The resupply mission will bring almost 5,000 pounds of supplies and machinery to the International Space Station. The next launch opportunity would be Friday, April 18th at 3.25 p.m. if the issue can be resolved. Uh, among the cargo arriving is a pair of legs for a humanoid robot aboard the station. Robonaut 2 is designed to perform regular tasks for the crew aboard the space station, so it should be pretty interesting. They need to get those legs up there. Um, you know, I'm, I'm glad that they're erring on the side of safety. Uh, you know, we, the last thing we need is, are even more accidents, you know, it just, we don't need that sort of thing. From businessweek.com, Intel's mobile chip progress falters while the PC market stabilizes. This is not necessarily great news for Intel. Uh... Intel Corporation's main personal computer processor business is showing signs of improvement after a record industry slump, yet the company's push to get into faster-growing mobile phone chips has gone backwards. The world's largest semiconductor maker has reported higher first-quarter sales and forecast revenue that may top analyst estimates in the current period, saying that the PC market is stabilizing, but at the same time, they are saying that their phone and tablet chip business posted a quarterly operating loss of more than $900 million as sales plunged 61%. So not good. Um, you know, I, I think this is probably the worst Intel has been in trouble, uh, financially anyway, in recent memory. You know, they, for a good portion of my uh, PC using experience the last 15 uh, some odd years, Intel has kind of pretty much been the king. It hasn't been until smartphones and tablets really kind of rose their head over the horizon that Intel's really had much of uh, uh, much competition at all um, in terms of how much volume they could sell. So um, it's interesting to see, you know, Intel obviously you know, they're going to be judged by how well they can adapt to the mobile business. You know, obviously they want to leverage a lot of what they've already got uh, in PC land on the mobile business. And ARM has unfortunately really been handing it to them. But, uh, you know, sometimes that's just the, the nature of the game. Um, I don't think that, you know, any trouble that they're having now will be permanent. But... Um, you know, because Intel's always had a strong track record of adapting to the market's needs. So it'll, it'll be interesting to see, you know, what comes of it. Anyway, uh, that will be all I've got for this episode. As always, everything we've talked about is linked up in the show notes. You can find those online over at quickstuff.com. If you're watching this on YouTube or blip.tv, you can uh, find the show notes here in the video, underneath the video. And uh, I'll see all of you on the next episode. See you then. Bye.